Hi, I'm Noreen Wenchin, the immediate past president for California Association of Professional Music Teachers, also known as Catmount. And today I'm going to do a guide for the presenters for our upcoming Catmount virtual conference. And I'm going to just give you a little background behind the scenes on uh, what it's like to use this big marker platform. For those of you who have had questions on it and want to go in the back end and see how you can prepare your information um, prior to your actual presentation on either Friday or Saturday. So uh, first of all, every presenter should have received an, an e email that says get ready to present. You can see on my screen it has my presenter notification with the title as well as other presenters. And notice there's just there's the button there that you're going to want to press, but if you scroll down, it also has the link to your exact webinar. And I'll just uh, explain that the way this conference is done with the big marker um, application is that each our conference is considered a webinar series. And within the series, we have um, around 24 or 25 sessions. And those are all uh, considered individual webinars within our series. So that should help you as you're navigating around. I know there's a lot of buttons in here, but there's also a lot of great modifications you can make and prepare early, um, which a lot of other uh, applications do not have. So um, this is kind of unique to, to, this, to this app here. All right, so you're gonna wanna click the button, get ready to present, and you're gonna wanna update a few things uh, when you get into this uh, to this window right here so this is just a basic window here this is the basic window for presenters it's going to actually uh, tell you that you're confirmed as a presenter if you don't get that button it might this area here that says you're confirmed you may have to log in and create an account with that email address that you were sent uh, in, in which you were sent the invitation. Um, and also, it's gonna check your system to make sure that your internet is quick enough in order to use this system. So Big Marker is different from, for example, Zoom, because you do not have to, um, in order, you don't have to download an app, pre-download an app uh, ahead of time. This is all inside the application, but you do have to have, uh, a device that can run this quick enough and not a phone so in fact I wouldn't even um, really I would really just do this off of a, a laptop or a, a stand a, a desktop computer I'm not sure how iPads and and other mobile devices if they're gonna be able to handle you know all all of this, these things that are within this app so it's checking our high-speed internet, the operating system. By the way, I'm on my Mac OS system, but the best system to use um, so that you don't have any problems on the actual day is going to be Google Chrome or Firefox. So it's probably best if you just initially log in um, with those, uh, with either of those, so that everything is set up ahead of time to make sure that your Google Chrome is um, you know is up to date or your Firefox? I just this just opened it up to here because I think um, it was just connected with my with my mail. All right, it's going to have the email that um, is used for this uh, for this app that you've been invited with, and within this you can test your speakers. You just click on it and it can play the sound. You can test your microphone and you have to allow um, Big Marker to use the microphone. Testing, testing, you can see the green light is going and you can also uh, test your webcam. So I'm testing my webcam, hello, hello. <laughs> it looks like it's working fine. All right, so it looks like everything's fine over there. Now, if you wanna get out of this window, you click on the, the CAPMT, the Catmount logo, and that is gonna take you to the overall uh, webinar of all the events in here. So now 
it's it's going to pull up a few of these at a time. You can, you know, you, you're able to uh, scroll through these. And like I said, if you scroll the bottom, this is the actual landing page for the entire conference, which is, it's, it's just listed under series. From there, people can register. It already knows that I've registered with this email, so it's going to tell me that. And um, the presenters are going to be listed here. You just toggle over, and you're going to be able to to read um, and you know all all about these uh, presenters in both this outer page and also within your presentation. So let's go back to the page that I had. Um, the get ready to present because the one important thing that we need everyone to do is to update your own information. So what we need to do is to complete your presenter profile. So over here, I have to click edit to present to my presenter to complete my presenter profile. And this is really important because um, here you have the ability to upload whatever photo you have. Um, and it, this should probably be a square headshot, not too high of a resolution, but um, if I, I'll just pull up one of mine and, um, and then I'll just show you how easy it is actually to just, oops, let me see if I can find one. So I'm just going to pull up a, any the square headshot here and double click and now that's going to, um, and when I put save changes, it's going to add that in. Okay, I'm going to add my title. And I'm going to add in any bio information here. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to add everything in. I'm just going to actually... Um, I'm gonna actually just cut and paste in that a little short bio in there. And here's the email address that I have for that. Now I can also put in uh, my social media, um, my social media information. I think this is really great for presenters to put in there if you're comfortable with social media. Because this way, as the um, your viewers and your audience uh, are looking are, are trying to contact you or as they're watching your session if they want to reach out to you and maybe they want to follow you or you know uh, contact you become uh, on your LinkedIn profile you can even put your um, your URL there so everything's sort of live and I think you can create a lot of great connections with uh, other members of our Catmount group other presenters and also with our special guests um, with this uh, with this if you like Again, it's optional, but I would say that every presenter should at least have their photo, their full name. Here, I just put a W there because it's my second account. Um, uh, their title, and um, you know, if you have more than one, you can put that in, and uh, and at least a short bio. The bios in this should be fairly brief. I mean, you can make it long, but you know, most readers are not going to read anything that's, that's, that's super long. So it might be better to have a brief bio and people can always look up your information on your website. If you put that there, please remember to click save changes. There's that blue button after you're done. And then um, I'm going to pretend that that's all done already. I'm going to get out of there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the back end is like um, in inside your presentation room. So if you're not seeing some of these features, please reach out to, um, to Stephen Pierce or myself and we will make sure um, that you have access to certain things within your own presentation room. There is a toggle button that must be clicked by one of the hosts. So the four hosts that can help you with this would be um, uh, Dr. Stephen Pierce and Dr. Michael Krikorian and our president-elect um, uh, Mona Wuda Caesar and myself, Noreen Wenjin. All right, so reach out to us if you need help with this. All right, so I'm going to now take you out of this part, and I'm just going to show you what this is like for the in Big Marker um, in the backside of the events. So here is the Catmount webinar page. If you ever kind of get lost and you want to get back to like the main 
to like their main page, just keep looking at the, this left-hand top corner. You'll either see a, a big marker logo or you'll see a cap mount logo. And then as you scroll around, you're gonna be able to, to find your way there. All right, so these are all of the sessions here. Now, I believe that I'm already logged in, so it's gonna recognize me. So I should have uh, some privileges, especially in this room that I'm presenting in. You might see a little more than usual because I'm also a host, but I'm, I'm gonna click on here and kind of show you around here. So you should have the ability to manage your own webinar that you were featured in. So if you are a presenter, especially if you are uh, the main presenter. Okay, so in here you can see manage uh, this manage webinar button and we're gonna need for you to update a few things in that. We're gonna need you to, to update your landing page uh, or just take a look at your landing page photo and make sure that that's okay. We've actually created a landing page photo for each session um, and some with graphics and text. So if you replace this part, remember that the words and everything up here have been typeset. So you're gonna lose that if you update it to your own photo. But you, if you know a little graphic design and you can do that, then you can certainly add that in. To the right part, you're gonna click Edit Page. And then from there, if I wanna switch out the photo, I click Edit Image. And I can upload a new um, image if you want. Now, this is the landing page image. So when people go to our series, our whole conference series, and if they click on this particular webinar and they wanna register, this is the picture they're gonna see once they click on it. They can click on to register. They're gonna see all the information. Here is, um, you're gonna also wanna edit this part about by just clicking the edit button, let people know what your session is about. If you have sort of an organized few topics of agenda, you can type them in here. Um, if you wanna add your categories, typically it's gonna be arts and culture and education and learning uh, for music teachers conferences. All of these webinars are free inside of the series. So once people have paid for, for the Catmount Conference as a whole, each individual webinar, they're gonna be able to view um, with no extra charge. And then, so all the presenters should come up here. You can see I'm gonna, you can see the presenters and their titles and also their profiles here. Okay, you can also scroll down and uh, I think we set most of these so you can view the amount of registrants on there. So you can see there's 157 in that one already. And so that's how you change the landing page photo. Now I'm gonna take you to a different page. We're gonna go either back or we're gonna click on, whoops. So now I'm gonna take you to a different part of, now that we've updated the landing page photo, we're gonna actually um, go into Manage Webinar. And instead of just pressing Edit here, we're gonna click on Design. And when you click on that, that not only takes you to the landing page and gives you a shareable link to your personal landing page for that, um, for that session, and um, it will show you the registration form requirements. Please don't change any of that. I, th I think that you will be able to see these things. The one thing that will need to be changed is this webinar preview card. So this um, preview card has, uh, when you click on to the seminars, uh, to, the, to the Cap Mount series, it will show a small thumbnail of all of the uh, the the pictures that on our land of all the landing pages. Now it's not going to be it's actually square, so it's just going to be a part of this, so you get the idea. But in order, um, you want this to sort of match the other one, or if you want it to be exactly the same, then if you updated the series, uh, then if you updated the other photo for your landing page, you're gonna to wanna to update this too. Again, it's very simple, same thing, click and drag here, upload a webinar image, and then you're just gonna select it and make sure you click save. All 
All right, so now we see, so this is the, the webinar preview card, and that's in the, uh, in the front. So that pretty much takes you in there. And now the last part is actually managing your own webinar. So you wanna be able to click on um, manage webinar, and there's two th different things you can do. You can actually create a practice room, a practice webinar that you can actually test out speaking in. And um, so you just click on practice webinar and you can see what it looks like. You can turn your webcam on and you can see, I'm gonna just put this a little higher so you can see. So you can actually turn on this camera and you can see what you would look like in the environment that you're gonna be in. You can see it's starting to test my download and upload probably doesn't like that I'm on um, that I'm on Safari right now but that's okay for now so my out okay there the speakers are on that for now which is fine uh, I am using a separate mic so this is you need to click and um, I have that as my default mic but I'm gonna want to click and make sure that that's correct all right now we're gonna continue to the webinar and again this is, oh, it's telling me that I'm not on the right version of Chrome. So I will, uh, I, I'm purposely not on Chrome because I'm just, right now I'm, I'm using a different email address, but um, I will make sure that on the day of I use Chrome and you probably wanna go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> so you don't have to switch it later. All right, so you can check a few things here. Here is your host control panel. And we have set this up so that every presenter should have access as a host for their own webinar. So for your own presentation. And I just want to show you a little bit about what this looks like, because there are some different things that you can do in it. You can, um, first of all, just check all the settings. And if you do want to enable public chat, I think that a lot of people, you know, might like to say hi when they come in. For most of these sessions, it's it's the whole time you're not going to be talking with, uh, you know, with the people in your session because these sessions are very short. But we have everything sort of as a default, so you can actually enable the Q and A chat, which is a separate chat here. So there's a public chat where people can say hello. There's a Q and A chat where people can ask questions. There's a poll so that you can actually open a poll if you ask a question you want people to say yes or no for all the people that are attending. And then there's a section for handouts so you can actually share a, a handout. There's a place to share here and there's a place to manage your handout here. So you can click those buttons and, and try to get, you know, that can be done during your session and it can also be set up before your session. All right. Um, that toggle that I just clicked took me, uh, kind of shrunk down my chat, but if I click on it, it's down here. It's going to show you all of that. For every session, you should have someone that's going to be introducing you and one of our Catmount uh, conference committee hosts. So should you run into any problems during your actual presentation, the chat you want to be on is probably a private chat to um, to one of the hosts. So we'll be keeping an eye on things. And, um, and then the next part is uh, when you're hosting, you can turn on and off your own uh, mic. You can mute your mic up here. You can turn your camera on and off. And uh, for yourself and when the uh, other, if you have other presenters and when your attendees start to come up here, you can actually click this little button here and you can click this little button here to mute a mic. Now there's going to be two other things here to turn off a webcam and a mic. And you do not want to click that because if you turn off, 
a webcam and a mic. While you can do that for yourself and, and other um, people in the session, you cannot turn them back on. So they have to know that they have to be able to log on again. So I would not use that function. That's really only for, um, mostly for admin that's supposed to use that. But if you need to turn your own mic on or off, uh, you can uh, can do that up on the top here, okay? And then um, you can sh also upload some documents in advance. So say that you have a video that you want to have queued and ready to go. You click on video, you drag and drop it, or maybe it's a YouTube video. You can click on the link and um, and load that video to play. So I would experiment with this in the test rooms, but remember you, in, you're going to want to upload the actual videos and the actual um, links to not the test room, to your actual room, which, um, which you'll be able to, uh, to get into early. If you're having a problem getting into the room to do this, please contact us as well. Okay, so then this area here, you can also upload slides. Um, they recommend a PDF and you can actually upload um, uh, various presentation software things like, um, but I think it does convert it into a PDF. And so just note that if you uh, put in something like a, I think you can upload a PowerPoint presentation. I believe that it's going to convert it into a PDF and some of the live links from the from that may not work so if you are plan to run a slideshow and you want to be able to click on those links instead you might want to use the share screen mode which is just similar to the zoom to as you would do in zoom it looks like you can also launch a blank whiteboard here so that's kind of handy if you want to have some kind of demonstration all right also, if you want to upload audio, you can upload the audio music here. You can load and play the music. You can, it's, a, it's all a drop and, and drag over here. Um, here's the screen. So if you want to just do the sh screen sharing, again, you click it and you can share your entire screen, your application window or the whole or the Chrome tab. Okay. Um, there's also something for pop off pop-up offers. I don't think anybody's going to be using, um, using that. Uh, let's see. And if you want to invite people, you can actually, well, I don't think people are going to be using that because you're just mostly just going to be for the day of. You can click attendee view and just see what it's going to look like. So if you're um, if you have a video running and you want to see what it's going to look like, you can, you can do that. All right. And let's see if we can get back. We're going to exit the webinar again. If I get lost or I want to get out of something, just start looking at the top left and clicking around there. Oops. Let's see. You can also sometimes use the back button, but it might not save what you have done. Um, in this case, let's see what's going on here. I'm going to just exit the webinar. So this is because I don't have anything running, um, and I'm in that certain view. It's just showing me a, a blank screen. All right. So, uh, let's go back in here and see if there's anything else that I can explain. I think that that is about it. So just remember that if you're going to upload something for the actual day to not do that on a practice session and you can always um, share your screen, but you might want to practice that just to see how much of your screen you wish to share. And um, under rec all of the sessions will be recorded and there will be a there will be a countdown as to when the recording starts but just so you know the um somebody actually has to press record and there has already been a host assigned to every present presentation to manually press that record button so you will not have to press that um, but when you see the countdown of i think it's from 30 
I think it's either from 10 or from 30, you'll see a countdown of how many seconds left. It actually might be a minute. I, I, I can't remember. It will tell you um, a countdown of when your live session is ready to begin. And then uh, the host that has been assigned just to record your button will, uh, will help and record that for you. All right. We don't have any automations on, so that should be left on off. That is for if we had an entire um, presenter, uh, if we didn't have live presenters, which we have live presenters. All right, for this part, um, there's some and they're advanced for uh, modifications for video. I don't know a lot about it, so I would just leave that unless you, and then, um, I, I think that is about it. So if you have any other questions, I would just um, please reach out to us. We still have a few days to get to do the fine tuning, but I would say the most important thing for you as a presenter is to make sure that you have clicked on that presenter email, that you have uploaded your photo in um within your session oh one oh, there's one other thing in the in the overall page um, you're going to want to make sure that your presenter photo and information is in there and that you have to actually do um, so if i go to these this marker here these these two triangles and i click on it it kind of takes you back <laughs> to the main page here. So I'm going to just show you how to get on here just in case you end up on this button. You're going to click on my series. You're going to click on Cat Mount Virtual Conference. And then on the first page, since this is the main page, there's a page for presenters. And there should be a page where you update your presentation info. So if I click on mine um, and I click on edit presenter, I can update again my photo and I can update um, my information here, my bio and my title. So it looks like most of the presenters are on here. If they are not, or if you're having a hard time with this, you can reach out to us, you can send us a photo and we'll be happy to upload it um, for you. And if you have the information, we can certainly help you with this. Um, you should be able to get into the, the bio and the photo in your own presentation room with no problem. But let us know if you have an issue with that. We would love to see all these presenters listed, you know, on the main, um, on our main page. So if you click show more, you can see all of the webinars for both days. There are some meeting spaces and um, you won't need to worry about those right now. And I hope that this answers all of your questions. I know that it's a new app and we are charting a new territory because I would say that this is probably one of the very first music teachers conferences nationwide that is gonna have both live performances, it's gonna have um, live lectures, but also a combination of some recorded features, but it also has this live integration where we have the ability to actually interact with everybody in our conference room. So you can actually turn on and off the conference room. Um, uh, you can actually interact with presenters live if you like, or just through the chat. It's sort of, um, it's up to you. <clears throat> so it is the first of its kind. And I know that it's, there's a lot to learn, <laughs> but uh, hope that this helps you out. All right. Thanks very much. And I look forward to a wonderful um, virtual conference on Friday and Saturday. Take care. Bye-bye.